Last time, we explored what are called basic bistable elements and latches. Those types of logic elements are unique because they are able to be set and hold their state or logic value of logic 0 or logic 1. This time, we're going to go further and explore bistable elements that also include a separate clock input, which are called flip-flops. Flip-flops are unique because unlike with the SR latch that we saw last time, they will never change their state, even if they are set, unless the clock signal has a certain state. In many ways, this new clock signal is acting like an enable signal telling the logic element when it should accept input and when not to. In this lesson, we'll explore two common types of flip-flops, the JK flip-flop and the D flip-flop. Both of these flip-flops use a clock input, so we'll also need to study a little bit about what that is. There are many different types of flip-flops, and they all have different functions. Since we're constrained on time, today we'll look at two of the most common flip-flops, the JK flip-flop with a logic symbol that looks like this, and a D flip-flop with a logic symbol that looks like this. The JK flip-flop is actually a fancy SR latch turned flip-flop, and the logic diagram looks like this. But let's not worry too much about that complex logic diagram. Instead, we'll go through the JK step by step and take a look at the truth table that describes how the JK flip-flop works. The JK flip-flop has three inputs, J, K, and CLK for clock, and two outputs, Q and Q0. The truth table for this flip-flop is a little tricky, but let's go through it. The first line shows when J and K are zero, and when the clock changes from logic zero to logic one. This is called a positive edge transition. The output should be whatever it already is. Next, we go when J, K are zero, one, and again when the clock goes from logic zero to logic one. The output will be Q is logic zero and Q not logic one. Keep in mind, the output will hold this state until different input is detected. The next line shows when JK is 1, 0, and the clock changes from 0 to 1. The output is Q at logic 1 and Q not at logic 0. The fourth line shows when JK are both logic 1 and the clock changes from logic 0 to logic 1. The output should switch their states. That probably seems like a lot of information to capture, but we need to look at one more thing before we can take a breather. Here's the timing diagram for the JK flip-flop. It represents all possible states that we saw in the truth table. Keep in mind that the outputs only change after the clock changes from logic zero to logic one at these points in the diagram. Changing gears for a moment, let's move on to a more straightforward type of flip-flop called the D flip-flop. The D stands for delay because this flip-flop actually simply accepts input with the clock change and then one clock tick later outputs it to wherever. Just like the JK flip-flop is a combination of smaller logic gates, the D flip-flop can be built purely with NAND gates, creating a logic diagram that looks like this. However, don't focus on that messy diagram. Instead, let's move on and see how this thing works. The truth table for a D flip-flop looks like this. When a logic zero is present at the D input, if the clock signal goes from logic zero to logic one, that zero at the D input is transferred to Q as a logic zero and Q not as a logic one. Alternatively, when a logic one is present at the D input, if the clock signal changes from logic zero to logic one, then that logic one is transferred to the Q output and Q not becomes logic zero. Any other state, such as the clock remaining steady at logic one, or logic zero, will not change the output. Only a clock transition from logic zero to logic one will allow any change in output on the flip-flop. Finally, we must look at the timing diagram of the D flip-flop to cement in our understanding of how this thing works. The flip-flop only changes its output when the clock signal changes from logic zero to logic one, as you can see at these points. Now that we've gone through the messy theory, truth tables, and timing diagrams for these two flip-flops, 
let's get our hands dirty and experiment with them. First, we'll use the JK flip-flop in a simple circuit to watch how it reacts to different inputs. The schematic circuit that we're going to build looks like this. To build the circuit, we're going to need a jumper wire kit, the breadboard, a 9 volt battery, and from the components kit, red LEDs, a 10 kilo ohm resistor, 100 ohm resistors, 7805 plus 5 volt regulator, a 9 volt battery connector, a push button, 74HC107 JK flip flop IC. To build the circuit, we're going to use the same power supply as before, with the 7805 connecting to the breadboard first. Pin 1 of the 7805 connects to the red wire of the 9 volt battery connector, and the black wire connects to pin 2. Then we connect pin 2 to the ground bus line of the breadboard, and pin 3, the plus 5 volt output, to the red power bus line of the breadboard. Next, the 74HC107 JK flip flop IC and the push button will go in the middle of the breadboard, and from this point, we'll continue connecting everything together following the schematic step by step. Now, power up the circuit. To test the JK flip flop circuit, first we'll set the J input to a logic 1 and the K input to a logic 0. When we press the push button, you can see the output swap states, as they should. And now, when we change the J input to a logic 0 and the K input to a logic 1, we press the push button again to simulate a clock pulse, and then the flip flop returns to its original output state. Thus, the JK flip-flop follows the truth table definition we saw earlier. The JK flip-flop is very good for setting specific states, just like we saw in the SR latch. The JK flip-flop can be seen as a 1-bit memory, since it holds its state. But now, let's move on to the somewhat more simple but equally important D flip-flop. The delay flip-flop test circuit that we'll want to build and test out will share the same qualities as the previous circuit. Here is the schematic. To build the test circuit, we'll use all the same parts from the previous experiment, except we'll swap in the 74HC74 D flip-flop IC. Let's build the circuit. First, we'll put the 7805 5 volt regulator at the edge of the breadboard. Next, the 9 volt battery connector connects to the 7805. From the 7805, a green wire connects to the power bus line and a yellow wire connects to the ground bus line. Now we place the ICs and push buttons on the breadboard. The power connections seen in green wires are made to each device as well as the ground connections with yellow wires. From this point, we'll slowly assemble things on the board according to the schematic part by part from left to right. The push button is used again with a pull down resistor to act as the clock changing from logic 0 to logic 1. And with the circuit built, first we'll test to see what happens when the input is connected to logic 1 and the clock is triggered. With a push of the button, the data is transferred from the D input pin to the Q output pin as the truth table says it should be. We'll swap the input to be a logic zero, and when we press the clock signal again, the logic zero is transferred to the output of the D flip-flop and held steady. You can do this back and forth forever, and the D flip-flop will always act the same. In digital electronics, flip-flops are the basic building blocks held upon the shoulders of the basic logic gates that we discovered a few lessons ago. The more complex and cool circuits that we'll dive into later on in this course will use flip-flops all over the place because of their wide array of functionality and awesomeness. Beyond that, in the real world, flip-flops in standalone integrated circuits can still be found in many places and even on modern PCBs. This is because even simple flip-flops offer tons of functionality like digital serial to parallel converters, push-button debouncing, and digital parallel to serial converters.
All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. Now that we have studied flip-flops, we need to know more about clock signals, what they are, how they work, and how we can make them. Continue to the next lesson to find out.